No, no, it didn't break anything. He was just concerned that if break is occurred, then the burden now fell on him. Right. Because it's his duty to maintain the service. That turned into an interesting question. Okay. So we're all set. We can get started now. Uh, welcome to the How to Get Your Kernel Bugs Fixed talk. Uh, one of the reasons we decided to have this talk, or I decided we need to have this talk, is we've got a lot of kernel bugs. Um, we have a lot of people upset that their kernel bug is not getting top priority, is not getting fixed. And there are things that you can do to help us fix your kernel bugs. So, uh, the state of our current kernel bugzilla. As of uh, August 1st, there are 702 total open kernel bugs. There are three people on the kernel team. Uh, that that makes it fairly difficult to address every single bug. Uh, obviously, we look at everything as it comes in, but it, it becomes a question of, well, what is the priority on this? Um, what kind of information is there? How much work am I going to have to do to see if this is even something that's reproducible um, that can be addressed in a timely manner and things like that? Um, bugs that come in with no information, things that are just straight up ABRT bugs with no context around them, um, those types of things, they honestly, we see them, they go in, and they're kind of at the bottom of the queue. We don't pay a lot of attention to them until we have cycles to go back and say, hey, you know, let's get some more information here, things like that. Uh, so we would like to get bugs that are easier to fix. And so how can you help us do that? How can you make sure that your bug, your little bug in this, this massive haystack of bugs, gets fixed? most important thing is file better bugs. That means you might have to do some work. Yes, ABRT will pop up and say, hey, you've got a kernel loops, and we'd like to file a bug for you. And it will file a bug for you. There are fields there where you can add more information. Please do. Uh, importantly, see if you can reliably reproduce the problem. If you can reproduce the problem and come down to a small set of steps that this is what I have to do to reproduce the problem every time, it makes it much easier for us to fix. Now, some problems are not that easy to reproduce. Um, I've seen problems that take two days to reproduce, and even then it wasn't quite reliable. So it's not something you can do every time, but if you can do it, and you can include the information on this is how we reproduce this problem, it's going to make it easier for us to find the issue, fix the issue. Uh, another thing to do is see if people are having a similar issue. Uh, Google is your friend. There are tons of other distributions that have bug tracking systems of different types. There's several different kernel mailing lists. Chances are if you've hit a bug, unless you have a problem with your hardware, you are probably not the only one who's ever hit that bug. So a quick Google search, you might find a link to a launchpad entry or a kernel network discussion, uh, LKML discussion, things like that. If you can include that information in the bug entry, that gives us a great place to start looking. Uh, you don't have to be a kernel developer to understand the, uh, you know, the there's a discussion happening around that, that similar bug, and then we can go in and, and figure out the problem. Uh, or perhaps, even better, someone else has already figured out the problem for us and there will be a patch there. The other thing that's really important, because the Fedora kernel moves quickly, is make sure that it's an issue with the most recent kernel. We get a lot of bugs filed on, uh, we're still getting bugs filed on 3.14 for Fedora 21. 4.1.5? That's an even better solution, but sometimes that requires some extra steps. Um, and I actually do mention it in here. We would, we would love for you to try the raw hyphen and see if it works. That might require configuring another repository, things like that. But everybody should at least try the most recent kernel. It's in updates. Uh, a lot of code churn happens in the kernel. And the difference between 3.14 and 4.105 is massive. So a lot of things get fixed. Unfortunately, there might be some new bugs introduced in there as well. It happens, but uh, if you've not tried the most recent kernel, it's, it's kind of a waste of time to go through and say, is this still a problem? Uh, or or to, to go through and say, you know, what, what was the problem in 3.14? Upstream, people don't really care about 3.14 anymore. In fact, uh, 4.0, I think, just had its last stable release, so it's done. Nobody cares about 4.0 anymore. 
uh, 4.1 is kind of it, and then everybody's working on 4.2. Uh, if we are still supporting that, if let's say uh, for Fedora 20 before it was in black, we did not push out the rebase there. If there's an issue with 4.0 on Fedora 20, then yes, we still care about it. Whether or not upstream cares, we still care because we're still supporting that kernel, but those are fairly rare instances. Usually we move along with upstream. Again, because there's three of us and lots of bugs. So anything upstream can help us with, we're happy to have. Uh, the other thing is include relevant information. So uh, AVRT and a lot of times people filing their own bugs will just, here's, here's the oops that I got. Uh, that's the only information they give. What we would like to know is uh, n not only what is the oops, but you know, what is your D message output? If this started happening with <coughs> this particular kernel version, we need to know that. You know, I just ran 4.1.4 and this was not happening and it started happening with 4.1.5. That narrows it down a whole lot. Uh, if it's uh, a device of some sort, PCI device, USB device, we might need uh, LSUSB output, LSPCI output. Those things are great to include proactively because when that bug first gets filed, we can look through and say, all right, well, here's a lot of information. You know, we have the oops, we have a lot of information surrounding it, and we might be able to see the problem right away. Uh, if not, at least we know that you are providing information and going to be uh, fairly responsive as, as far as taking care of that bug. Uh, we might ask for more information. So a lot of non technical users are never going to be able to give you that. Do you guys have? You know, run sauce and collect all this stuff for us and just attach it to you. We or don't. There used to and be. And why doesn't the board do that? Right. Well, it, it yeah. does, or it used to, right? It doesn't collect. But they kind, of, they kind of trim it back. Well, because there's always a, it's a privacy back. issue first. If you include too much, then right. it might have something. No, that, that, I, I, I think that's. The is not dangerous. That's no. true. <laughs> yeah. There right. used to be that's a great tool that. Oh, no, but the ones that are not true for we didn't even know it then it turned out. Yeah. Um, I mean, There's always an argument. Many people are considering even the hardware name in the books as a file information. And maybe I see always. Well, it doesn't auto file. I mean, I mean, so in Fedora, in the Ubuntu, there was one simple tool, it was up college or something like this, uh -huh. which just you, you had to run shell. Run this tool, give it my number, and press enter. It authenticates to a launch pad uh, and added LSPCI, USB, DMS, every the default set of stuff. Right. It was even probably sending ACP items. Right. Or something, but mm -hmm. it was just mm -hmm. one standard set of all data mm -hmm. without uh, giving, without asking user what you have to provide. You know, because well, that's the sauce of this. It's not hooked up the bugs at all that way. It's, it's yeah. just collecting the data and making yeah, it sit. So it's, there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's better than that. But, but isn't there just a sysinfo, because I know I, there's often FK dash dash sysinfo, I thought there was, which just collects stuff automatically. I don't know if that does I'm not sure exactly what it collects. Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of FPaste? I thought those were mentioned as FPaste dash dash sysinfo. I've seen that mentioned a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it will. It will dump some info. I was never aware of that. It would, but, it would but, be good so to see what it, what it collects. But the other thing I, I'd also notice is that it's true um, the average user may not know how to do that, but if they come back to, to us and say, we don't know how to do that, it's pretty easy to be able to tell the simple constructor to say, open a terminal and type this command. Yeah, right. so and I guess but okay. you guys don't yeah, the goal is that they say that over Well, over they don't necessarily right? have to. It depends on right. who's triaging the bugs. Well, 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 well that's so where we are triaging the bugs. Yeah. Nobody it else does. Yeah. So maybe a we we do have a kernel bug triage page that walks yeah. you through. You it has links to all of the bugzilla. Yeah. Uh, you know, here are the bugzilla queries for untriaged bugs. Nobody uses it. Uh, every once in a while, we'll yeah. get somebody who comes along and does a great job for a week or two, and then they disappear. So uh, you know, yeah. I, I understand it's it's. Overwhelming. Well, it's not easy. It's, it's an no. overwhelming job. It is. Yeah. It's it's yeah. a thankless job, except oh, we yeah. really, really appreciate it. So thank you when you do that. But you know, we, we haven't had that in a while. Yeah. I think last year somebody did it for a month or so. That was the last result. 
Is there like a bright for a kernel for auxiliaries that can go in and, and like automatically throw in a comment that says, you have entered a kernel bug, thank you so much. Now go read the trash page yeah. and here's some of the other stuff we need to really look at your bug. Uh, well, but that's, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I wonder again about if, if we're not better off doing that on the front side. If, if, if the admin mm -hmm. is filing a bug for you, yeah. We can also still we can we can change it to just say by the way here's ways to make this better right <laughs> and that means interaction with that team I mean I'm sure yeah. well, listen we've got part of no, they, team, they're right they're yeah. Yeah. Our, yeah. Yeah. Is, they're they're actually very responsive on I mean they've mm -hmm. done a great job of filtering out a lot of the croft and making sure we're not getting oh. bugs filed with tainted and, and mm -hmm. things like that that are important uh, that actually is another very important point is if your Problem happens, and you've got a tainted kernel, an Nvidia, driver, uh, or an NVIDIA yeah. driver, or you know anything like that. Yeah. You're going to have to reproduce it without that, or honestly, <coughs> we're just not going to look at it. Well, um, I will say that tainted doesn't mean necessarily what it used to. I mean, there's a tainted flag right. that says you oops before. So right there, are, well, so there are multiple taint <laughs> flags, yeah. and that's another important one, though. The one that says you oops before means your system is in an unknown state. We want to know the right. original oops. Yeah, you, go back. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you, don't grab that, you don't grab that last one that has the tainted flag. Go to the original one that's not tainted, and that tells you what started the problem. Right, except a lot of us have machines that just throw a, an oops at, at boot just because there's right. something wrong with the ACPI table, and yeah. that yeah. doesn't necessarily render any further yeah. one report useless. So right. it's a tough, that's it is. A tough thing. <laughs> that's a the engineering problem we can solve. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's, see if you find enough copies of this that, that graph does sometimes trust and sometimes yeah. it doesn't mm -hmm. split. Yeah, right. I mean, there are plenty of examples of that on the board. I think there's, for example, there's the IOMU one that always said the worm up that, you know, multiple DMARs. It actually says your kernel is fine, but it's still warned, which therefore gets right. a paint flag. So. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we can link those together by default in Bugzilla. We can say this person filed both of these uh, through, uh, through uh, ever, and, and, and these are probably cause, uh, plausibly causal for candidates. Right. And then separate them out based on, on which parts repeat on other systems. We used to have two, and Dave was really good at it, uh, just just by looking. And we, we haven't replaced. There are people with bad hardware that file a ton of yeah. bugs. And it, it was weird, I guess. Dave remembered every strange bug and could <laughs> identify this person has filed 18 bugs over the last, and they won't check their yeah. hardware like we've asked, so we oh, yeah. just kind of need to ignore them because it's bad hardware. Uh, and he was really good at that. Uh, several times he would comment that, and people were like, oh, yeah, I replaced my memory, and it's all gone away. <laughs> <laughs> um, some extra helpful items, the things that are going above and beyond just doing a... a Google search and, and you know, seeing if other people are having a problem or making sure that we get the relevant information around. Mm -hmm. If there's discussion upstream about the issue, uh, the Google search will probably help you find it. If you, link, you know, link it to the bug, then that helps us a lot. If it doesn't exist, you can start one. Uh, there is a maintainer's file in the kernel and we don't actually ship it by default on the system, but I, I think I should probably just go ahead and add mm -hmm. it on the kernel wiki Th this is the link to the maintainer's file, so you can go and see who's the maintainer for this subsystem. Uh, I know that it's it's kind of daunting if you are not a kernel developer, or not a member of the kernel community, to send an email with a bug report. But really, it can be a, a very simple email to the maintainer's list, uh, to LKML, but not as useful because it it's very noisy. Uh, saying, hey, I ran into this problem with this kernel version, and as long as it is the most recent stable kernel ver version of what we're shipping, you'll probably get some good response on it. Interesting. Yeah, it should at least be interesting. And if you, if you send that first email, even if you don't want to continue in the discussion or the discussion goes above your level, you have a link to, you know, this was the email I sent to the list. We can follow in on that discussion as well and hopefully get, get things happening there. Uh, a lot of times, that's what we're going to have to do anyway. Uh, you know, we don't have the cycles to go through everything. We don't have the hardware that everybody has. So we're going to have to start the discussion upstream anyway. And if you've already started it for us, that's a great head start. Yeah, but you guys already have the, the right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, flame, the flame part of it, we can deal with pretty well. But yeah, a Jillian and user is probably not good. Yeah. It's actually the opposite I, I found. 
But for the most part, if you're a random person and you're attempting to make a reasonable bug report, mm -hmm. you'll generally be um, accepted fairly well. And sort of if you're actually a somewhat experienced person who keeps screwing up, or yeah. you're a new person who's continuing to screw up, then you will get yourself in trouble. Right. So I have, I will say, I have not had a lot of luck. Well, you you may or may not have luck, but if the conversation has started, then That's true. You know, if if somebody replies, then maybe we can jump in it as well. And and, uh, and also the upstream mailing list has pretty good Google news, so later when somebody hits That's that true. problem, they're going to find that post and say, "Hey, I'm also seeing this." Right. It helps a lot. Uh, if you do find a patch somewhere, even if you're not sure that it fixes the issue, you think, "Hey, this patch." Uh, you can point that out as well. It's it's much easier for us to look at it and say, oh, well, no, that patch doesn't fix the issue, or yes, that patch looks like it might fix the issue, but it's been superseded by this patch, things like that. You know, we can address that. It's still a huge help if you include a link. And if you would include a link to a valid patch that definitely fixes the issue or probably looks like it fixes the issue, we're probably going to build you a kernel very quickly, a scratch kernel, and say, test this. And if it works, then it gets into the next release. We're releasing kernels pretty much weekly. So that gets an issue quick, uh, fixed very quickly. Uh, if you can tell us the most recent kernel that did not have the issue, that's great. If you installed on, on 3.14 and uh, you know for F21 you just updated from a fresh install and it jumps to 4.15, uh, yeah, there's an issue there. Well, maybe you should go back and check the first 4.1 release we did for it. Uh, check the, the last 4.0 release we did for it. If you can just check those things very quickly and then say, hey, this this kernel had it, this one did not, that really helps us narrow it down. And then, as someone else mentioned earlier, if you can test with the Rawhide kernel, that is a snapshot of Linus's tree daily. Um, yeah, well, almost daily. Yeah, it's built. And so, if you can test with that and the issue has gone away, that tells us that it's fixed upstream and makes it a little bit easier for us to first track down where it was fixed and, and try to get that patch back for it in. And for an issue that's that's causing problems for users, we probably also want to get that into the stable tree so that not only do our users receive the fix, but everybody running stable kernels gets the fix. General tips. Uh, a little bit of kindness goes a long way. Uh, we don't like to see kernel issues any more than you guys like to see kernel issues. I know they're affecting your systems, but we're not you know, we're not sitting there laughing at, at kernel bugs. Uh, we would rather there not be any, and that doesn't mean we would rather you not file any. It means we would rather there actually not be any bugs impacting our users. It's an impossible goal, but we do want to help. Uh, Due to volume, a lot of issues do take some time to get to. But if you're nice about it, we are certainly much more likely to get to your issue quick, uh, more quickly than people who are throwing a fit. Why is this not being taken care of? Uh, you know, especially, especially when it's not something that's affecting many users. Uh, mm -hmm. The reality is, if you are one user who's filed a bug against one problem, your sound device or something like that, it's not going to take priority to a bug that. 15 people up here that it's affecting booting or affecting uh, data, especially things like data or you know, things of that nature. And be responsive. Uh, when we ask for information, it means we're actually looking at your bug. You know, right now, I understand email takes a little bit of time. If we ask for more information and, and if you can respond within a few days, that's great. If you're taking two to three weeks to respond, a lot of times it's going off of our radar again. No, plus it's out of date now. Well, sure. Yeah. That that can be the case as well. Uh, in two to three weeks, we've probably done two more kernel bumps. So, uh, hit and run bug filings are bad for everyone, and there there are a lot of bugs that get filed as a, hey, here's this oops, I ran into this issue, and we never hear from that user again. We can ask for it. We can ask it. They all the only time they ever get closed is when we do the auto, you know, yeah. we've done a full rebase, we would like you to test this, nobody responds within three weeks, they've been sending need info, and then they get closed, and we don't know if it was actually fixed or not. Um, those types of bugs add to the volume significantly, they add to the noise, and it makes it harder for us to get to other bugs, right? The time that we spend looking at that bug 
ends up being wasted time because you're not going to help us fix the bug. You're not going to help us help you. And that doesn't mean that we need you to go and do the code. We just need some information. So, yeah, please be responsive. Bonus points. Yeah. If you can find a patch, that is the quickest way to get a bug fixed. Uh, I'm not saying you will all the time. In fact, you probably won't a lot of the time. But if you can include one, you get big bonus points for that. It's going to be fixed very quickly. Uh, the second is write a test. Um, the, we've been talking for a couple years now about the, the test suite that we run. Every kernel gets tested as soon as it's built. Uh, for issues that are quick to reproduce, easy to reproduce, it might be worth writing a test. It doesn't require kernel knowledge. Uh, there's a link right here on the testing guidelines, but really the testing harness is all in bash. So if you have these commands that can reproduce that problem quickly, then write the test and submit it to the, uh, to the uh, Fedora kernel mailing list. We'll get it included in our test suite and hopefully make sure that the issue doesn't come back up. So uh, it's not a requirement, and a lot of times we'll look at, at bugs and say, oh, yes, that was quickly reproducible. I can write a test for that really quick. But if, if you do one, that's even better. And I think there's a badge for people writing new tests. If, if not, if not there's a, I put in a proposal for one. I haven't seen how that fell out. Do you guys run your regressions across all the edges? Uh, or in most of, like, x86? We are only primary arches right now, except for ARM. And that's because of lack of hardware, so it's x86. Okay, so you need power, you're probably never going to get an SVM anyway. No, um, they, they could actually... Run, we could find a tiny SVM on this nine box somewhere, right? That's their full thing. Well, actually, though, they could run so them. Don't have no, no, they're pretty well tapped. They could run them, uh, but another part of the, the issue with that is because Koji's not doing those builds directly. Oh, that's right. They yes. go through, so they would have to have actually, there would have to be a second monitor that says, all right, we need to kick off these jobs because this build's finished. I know with Fed Message we see them now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I see every time a 390 or power build is done. Yeah. But it doesn't, do, we don't do anything with it. Yeah. They could easily uh, yeah. run the test suite as well. Well, well what we've done on all of those systems, actually, all the VMs that are running the test, mm -hmm. we just set it as, as startup, it grabs the latest kernel, runs the test, and then shuts itself back down. So, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to add to startup to an existing system and say, hey, just test every time you boot. And those results, even if community runs them, those results still get submitted to uh, our server. We'd mm -hmm. see all of it there. Arches. So probably they have more active those guys. Yeah. But right now, arches don't, um, I don't think they show up unless they run from our harness. Because we didn't want a bunch of, like, if people are yeah. testing kernels right. and they're building in those yeah. things, yeah. I, I don't think they'll show up. Yeah. yeah. So, but we can make those visible. I mean, is there really that much that you can actually do an automated test for, given that a significant portion of this is going to be completely hardware related? So. There's not a ton. Uh, there actually is a mechanism in the harness where you can say this is a hardware specific test and it checks to see. So there's there's three things you can do with the test. You can either execute it successfully, you can skip it, or you can fail it. Uh, obviously you don't want to fail it, but you can say, hey, is this is this module installed? Do it. Am I running this hardware? Okay. And if I'm running it, then I run this test. And if I'm not, then I skip the test. So I can just run the thing on my hardware to. Right. And right. and if it's in the suite, then anybody else who has that hardware okay. can also run it. So there are badges for running the test suite, which means we get a lot of users actually running the test suite and submitting results. Okay. It's it's great. So nope. even if it's something that you know, if it's hardware that we're not going to get in RBM, somebody out there might have it and. Yeah, it's it's worth testing. Is there a master wiki page that links to all of these, or you know? Uh, well, there's the uh, just just the kernel wiki page has okay. all of the things on it. So it's got the the testing information. It's got the triage information. It's got um, some of it does need to be updated. I actually went to update something this morning. and realized there are a couple of other places we need to update, but that'll happen hopefully in the next week. Uh, I'm not sure. We're all going to Plumbers next week too. So yeah. Yeah. Where's that? Yeah. Seattle. So I'm home Monday, and then I'm back out Tuesday night. Likewise. 
so you have the summary. It's it's pretty simple. We've got a ton of kernel bugs. We've got three people. If we have your help, we can get to your bug more quickly. The more information you give us, the more likely we're able to find a fix. And a little bit of work that you do on your end is actually greatly appreciated by us. So uh, you know, when we fix a bug, it might if it's your bug, it makes Fedora better for you, but it also makes it better for anybody else who's running across that same bug and not willing to put forth the effort. Um, yeah, we we want to make Fedora as good as it can be. So, so do we. Hmm? So do we. Mm -hmm. Most people use it. Most people do. Yeah, most people do. Most people are not just saying. Hmm. Bugs can be fun. Bugs can make you fun. <laughs> they can do that too. <laughs> so you mentioned that occasionally somebody pops up out of the community and does triage and then leave. Yes. So it sounds like what you need is five or ten people from the community doing triage and oh, then not sure. leaving. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, if if we had five people who came through and maybe did a half hour a week a piece, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that would be okay. massive. So it's so, so okay from your standpoint for somebody to drive by, do some triage according to the documents that you yeah. laid out, well, and absolutely. then maybe they're, you know, they got to go back to work the next week, but sure. they did something. Okay. Sure. So why don't we structure this differently? Why don't we say there's a, but get, get a badge? That's a, one of those leveled badges series that, that is. I stuck around doing kernel triage. Some of us don't times. care about the badges. Well, you know. But, but, they're, but, they're but there are a lot of people well. who do. <laughs> Working pretty well as Okay. Uh, um, and, and say, you know, you get the first one for, for, for showing up in an empty day and, and learning the triage and doing some triage that day. Right. And mm -hmm. every release we have one of those, one activity triage day. day yeah. and, and you get a badge for, for showing up consecutively. That would be kind of awesome. That would actually be really awesome. We could do, we could do some of that, and that's so we have test days that are that are formally organized from a, a Fedora standpoint for all sorts of subsystems. It would be a good idea to throw in a triage day, particularly probably the late alpha or very early beta. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they got hack fests around here. You know. Do well, you can people in the room do some curl, but well, you can. Yeah, well, you don't have to do it in the room. I mean, you can do it in IRC. Oh, of course, yeah. So we can just. I'm just saying here we have a whole conference. You know what I mean? That's true. We do, but there's there's usually there's a lot more development that happens in the hack fest on Saturday that really kind of require people being in the same room or yeah, it's really helped by that. Whereas, I, I think we would be taking away time from the people who. So I'm doing other things. I was, I'm, I'm checking the page to see if my questions are already answered before I ask the stupid questions. But it's there's a couple of issues. I mean, assuming we're of the technical level that we can build our own damn kernels right. and test things. Right. Um, you run into an issue where the Fedora kernel is not vanilla, mm -hmm. so you can't really get bisected for one thing. But I've actually been working on that. I have a okay. set of scripts that I've sort of been testing to be able to bisect for stuff and I had at least one person do a trial run and he did find a bug but he did work around it and we did put it in five. Are you the new Carl person that's come on board yes. whose name I forget? Okay. Yes. Yeah. This is Laura. This is well, thank you. Th this is Colonel Person three. So, so is Colonel Person two here as well? Yes, Josh. He's he's in the Okay. He's in the Fedora yeah. account. Yeah. He's and I know it doesn't really matter if, what if, if I see what people look like from He'll he'll be there. doing the stick of the kernel talk this afternoon too, which is kind of the, the talk we do every year. One as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it'll be a meet your best as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, let's see. So, we're talking about get bisectability. Um, I have this problem where I know how to build Fedora packages. So, mm -hmm. I'll tweak something in the kernel and then I'll kick off a mock build and wait three hours for the whole kernel package to dump out. Right. I know that the kernel, you could just build source in there without having to go through all the pain in the rear of doing that. But I have no idea how you actually get that installed as a regular kernel so that I can boot into it and then boot back out of it. When right. I so um, there's, there's actually a great readme doc in the kernel source that kind of goes okay. through. You can also there's take a shell script in the package directory that, yeah. that runs the RPM dash BD dash without dash what it was out dash without. Oh, right, right, right. right. And, and, and makes the smallest one that's going to be a whole lot faster. That's true. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't even need an RPM if I know that it's going to show up in the grub menu after I finish my install. Right. But I have no idea if it actually does. Well, so that. there's a new kernel. There's there's a yeah. There's actually a script that okay. should work. Okay. So once you copy the kernel over to boot and then it make install will do that. Yep. Well, well, I mean, yeah, what, yeah. what I'm wondering is, I don't know that we've patched make install to work correctly with everything being in user now, and I don't know if new kernel script requires it. So it's working. It's working for me on F22. I haven't tried okay. F23 or rawhide. So. Well, F23 or rawhide should work. Is the question, F, right? F, <laughs> no, it's F. It's F21. That's okay. the question. Okay. So. But if it's working in 22, then it's working. Yeah. yeah, it's enough. So. Yeah. Right. So, so, so it's copying the slash boot and running kernel package. Or running software. It's also kind of annoying that we have to copy it to do that when you're when you're clearly yeah. doing a quick thing there. But yeah. yeah. So if we're as veterans mm -hmm. have questions, then caption some of this stuff somewhere yeah. so that you're not answering the same questions. Yeah. Over right. And over. Well, I mean, that's, that's what this page is for. Yeah. That's why I'm making sure yeah. that there is a build so, so there's a lot yeah. we should do there probably because we Right now, like if you've done that, you, you've got this kernel sitting in slash boot forever, and it's in your grub menus forever. And right. we, we, and we don't really have a way to say, hey, I'm installing test kernel, now I'm done with that test kernel in that kind of phrasing. Okay. Um, there is a way to, which we could write relatively easily. We could, and there's also a, a pretty simple way to do an RPM build that's just a quicker build. Yeah. yeah. So if you tell it you don't want the debug, you don't want, uh, I mean, that, that's a lot of it. Yeah, in which case, so if, you, if you're making a release kernel, back. you're also building a debug kernel. Right. Yeah. You yeah. don't need that. And that takes a long time. It does. So. Um, it's all this guy. Is someone still calls for me? With uh, this conversation seems to be focused on bugs that are clear with kernel bugs. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm seeing a bug of an X that started with 3.18. Right. And I. Well, I try every kernel, and I, oops, it happens again. I right. a leak, I go back to 316. Yeah. Stable. Okay, so that's, 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 in kernel. Yeah. that's a kernel. Yeah, yeah, that's a I mean, kernel. How do I know yeah. who's fault yeah. it is? I've, I've yeah. added my two cents to the Bugzilla right. report. I've added my two cents to the free desktop one. And I think it's kind of getting, the, the bug is kind of getting lost because everybody's saying, right. my problem. Well, so the, the most of the X bits are, I, I mean, a, a lot of it is kernel now. So it's, it's uh, you've got usually the same people looking at both sides of it. So it's okay to file a bug as kernel and now? Well, it for, actually, for, from a triage standpoint, yeah. when, when a bug is filed against kernel and it's in DRM, it actually gets refiled against the X component anyway because that's how our graphics guys want okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it would be it would be refiled against uh, you know INM fifteen or Radeon or whatever and the, the appropriate maintainers will take a look at that there. That's the method that they so you okay. can't you can't really put it in the wrong place. Yeah but yeah, yeah the, the lesson here is do whatever seems right, it'll get it'll get right. Okay well the problem <laughs> is you're talking about yeah. you know we can't do the triage, which means we can't, because there's not enough cycles, so we can't necessarily make sure the bug right. gets redirected it's because get nobody has a chance to look at it. Right. So, right. Yeah. And so if I'm doing triage, how the hell do I know whose bug it is? Right? There, so there's, uh, the triage page includes some of that information. No, does it? Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll. <laughs> it, it walks through a lot of that. <laughs> okay. So how are you guys finding um, ABRT, right? Is that helpful? Is it helping you figure out how to prioritize which you're looking Well, at. with the retrace changes that have been made recently, yeah. it's gotten a lot better, and Laura's been doing some work as well, I too. Did, I did some work on there, but still on the daily basis, um, mm -hmm. I'd probably say in terms of notifications, there's still a lot of noise. Um, I think specifically, um, ABRT gives, still gives notifications for very old kernels. So, for example, like, you know, the kernel's uh, talking about 3.14, we still get notifications for that, or at least yeah. on a daily basis, about, you know, this is to hit 10, it's hit 100, mm -hmm. um, which still happens. And then it's still, the other thing I found is that ABRT, it's still, unfortunately, it only gives a backtrace, and it's hard, hard, been hard to be able to get the rest of the kernel D message unless someone actually files a bug. So, if they just have the ABRT report, then they will get backtrace, which there's a few of them where it's just to be a little bit more information we could actually get on it a little bit harder to be able to tell where things are. So 
it's a step in the right direction, but I still found it to be very hard to sort through to figure out what is actually doing stuff. Because I think the thing is that APRP is still passive, so if someone is actually taking the initiative to file a bug, then it's still more likely that we're going to take a look at it. So, well, yeah. so if you guys do more well, just a few months ago, I was working for you, and uh, I don't really touch it anymore. But, oh, and I did, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm still very familiar with the code, and I really can't help you uh, to push the changes. But I believe the guy, because we always were loading the request from you guys, like from Chrome people, and from Adam Lewis, mm -hmm. and um, um, because you are the only two uh, groups that were able to specify the their request rule. And it's for the first time that I hear that some people are unhappy with APRP. Because every year, Josh is talking about Kona, <coughs> he's saying he's not touching no user stuff about Kona. So we had the impression that you were pretty happy about it. We, we are much happier than. But yeah. Okay. It sounds like what you're saying is just give me this a little bit more, this chunk of email message, well, so and, it's, it's, and that gets us what we It's really need. good, but, but I, I think it's, it's still sort of a, there's definitely more work to be done. I think it's right. definitely helpful to at least get some ideas to focus on. And I mean, it's, it's sort of probably a constant bias, I'd probably say, is that I don't remember a couple of things I've actually found that have actually been really good, especially being able to point to that. Well, isn't the factor because, okay, this looks like a pretty obvious thing, or, oh, I, I saw a fix for it somewhere else. So, it is, it, it's, it's helpful in consolidating, but I, I'd probably say it's less of a problem with the or being probably just more the volume of kernel stuff in general mm -hmm. that is, is a problem, so. Well, and, I mean, the, the biggest problem that I think we have with AVRT is not actually an AVRT problem. Yeah. It's just a, because of the way that it pops up, people file bugs. And they, they click the, you know click to say file the bug and have AVRT file the bug and then pretty much just assume they're done. So yeah. we get a lot of bugs that are AVRT filed bugs that they file and then walk away and we never hear anything from them again. You ask for more information, you don't get it. Would you classify that as better than nothing, or you wish it would be better if people just didn't file them at all? That's actually a, a really tough call. Um, sometimes. It depends on the yeah. bug, yeah. because there's some of them that are in fact pretty self-contained, you can tell exactly what's going on, but the problem is, is that if it's sort of a obscure, uh, if, mm -hmm. if it's something like if there's a specified warning, then you can generally tell at least get an idea what's going on, but if it's just like a random general protection fault, it's okay. yeah. 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 Thermal, it's then, yeah. Also sometimes helpful when you have somebody who does actually file the bug, and then you've got all these other ABRT reports that they're hit and runs, but you know, all right, there are a lot of people hitting this problem, and I do have somebody who's responsive and going to help me fix it now. So they're useful a lot of the time, and then a lot of the times you do get the, it was a one-off, it'll never happen again, you've got this bug file, they're not responsive about it, so it, it's just noise, but I don't know that you can, that I don't know a way to effectively get rid of that noise with without okay. getting well, the Well, somebody just has to go in and say, look, we asked for info, it's been a month, we'll close the bug, sorry. Right. Yeah. So part of that is, is is something that we need to, to work on on a different scale than talking about the kernel bugs. Because what, what, what I hear you saying is we've given the user a mechanism wherein they can report that a fault has happened without becoming involved in reporting the Correct. Right. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, and now they're not responding because right. they're not involved. But doesn't right. a lot of that not go to Bugzilla now? Doesn't yeah, the, 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 the just collect this stuff are isolated. Yeah. yeah, retrace, retrace it, and that retrace is which is nice. Yeah, getting much better for us. I mean, yeah, we're just yeah. from escalating to the point where it's in the way as much. Right, but it still doesn't. That doesn't increase the incidence of solving the user's problem. That decreases. Right. You think so? Yeah, because okay. the, not necessarily the, the number of them you're addressing it is lower. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the curious page is relatively complete. I mean, you it's have a lot of point three link, it. which I was going to add, but Bugzilla links are so few. <laughs> Where's the twenty two? If you go back and it's actually at view the it, top. It, it's, it's right on there. Yeah, it's the very top of the page. No, okay, I'm looking at the link. I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, what you're not actually viewing the source. What I'm saying is that you go back and actually view it normally without without the source. You oh. can see it. 
I was just trying to add the F23 link because <laughs> it's not there right now. Right, so that was what I was saying. Part of it was out of date. The yeah. 23 stuff needs to well, be added. I was just going to edit it in right now if I could figure out. Even better. Change the, F the URL. The post UN verified at least. Component kernel flag type snake. Burger here. There we go. 